Great, thank you everyone for joining today. Um, my name is Ashley Tankersley. I manage international student recruitment for Hillsborough Community College. Um, I'm located in Tampa, Florida. I've been with the institution for um, over eight years now, and I've been to the, ne the Netherlands a number of times. I was just saying earlier before we started today, I can't wait to get back for everything to get back to normal. Um, and we can start traveling again. That's going to be great. If you guys have any questions during the presentation, please save them towards the end. Um, and I'd be more than happy to answer those. So before we get started real quickly, um, I'm going to play a little video for you. It's about a minute long. We got to know a lot of people in different organizations. We are like a family and everyone is very connected and involved with the international program. It makes you feel at home. My sign, HCC. The international office has been amazing. They help me every time I come there and I always feel very welcome. We a Jose C. Nous sommes HCC. We are HOSS. Nous sommes HCC. What do HCC be? We are HCC. Great. Um, all right, so let's go on. Let's talk a little bit about the city of Tampa, which is where we're located. Um, in the Tampa Bay region, there's about 4 million people. In the city of Tampa itself, we have a little over 300,000 people. And more recently, Tampa is ranked the second best large U.S. city for undergraduate students. So it's becoming more and more, um, a, more and more of like a college town. Because, you know, as we all know, a really strong curriculum and supportive school environment is super important to your academic success, but location is as well. So let's get into a little bit about HCC. We are a rather large community college. We have five different campuses in the Tampa Bay area. We have a total enrollment of over 45,000 students, which is the full-time equivalency to 22,000. Um, and it's all divided within the campuses. So it doesn't get too crowded on campus. You don't feel very overwhelmed. We have about 350 F1 international students that come from over 80 different countries. So we have a really well-rounded international student body. You don't see um, too many people from one country or another. Um, we definitely get a bunch of students from the Netherlands. I think currently we have almost 10. So that's pretty good. We're in the double digits there. Um, we do offer on-campus student housing. You'll see a picture of that on your screen there. And I'll tell you more about that later in the presentation. Um, one more thing to keep in mind is that Tampa is one of the top 10 safest metro areas in the US. Now, what is a community college? I'm gonna tell you, and at the end of the presentation, you're gonna be a professional. You'll be able to give this presentation yourselves. Um, basically in the US, it takes about four years to get your bachelor's degree. A community college is the first two. It's essentially the first two years of a bachelor's degree. Now, why would someone want to go to a community college first versus go straight into university for all four years? Well, I'll tell you why. Um, number one reason is lower tuition costs. It costs a lot less to go to a community college. And I'll talk more about all of these things throughout um, the presentation as well. Um, <clears throat> smaller classroom sizes, we cap our classroom sizes off at, in a normal world before COVID-19, at 30 students or less per class. Um, right now, because we are following the CDC guidelines and ensuring that people are at least six feet apart, we cap our classroom sizes off even smaller than that. Um, we also offer two plus two transfer programs. I'll speak more about that later. I'm not sure if you guys know what an SAT exam is, the SAT, but you do not have to take it. It's a college entrance exam. You don't have to take it to get into a community college, which is fantastic. Um, we also offer, uh, you have the chance to do optional practical training or OPT, which is basically one year work authorization in the US. And I will definitely talk more about that as well. Let's talk a little bit about the finance part 
So these are the costs to go to HCC for one full academic year. I know it looks a little overwhelming looking at this total cost for a year, but um, I'll break it down a little bit for you. The top line right there, that's the cost to study at HCC for one full academic year, it's two semesters. So if this is how much it costs for two semesters, if you, you know, break that down in half, one semester costs a little over $4,000. That's just for the studies. The rest is just the estimated cost of living in the state of Florida, and it'll vary from person to person depending on your living habits. So for example, if you like to eat out at restaurants a lot and you don't really know how to cook, you'll probably spend more in the um, food category. Uh, on the other hand, if you, you know, are great in the kitchen, you want to save some money and go to the grocery store and cook from home, you will spend a lot less in this category. So this is just the average um, cost. The bottom line is how much you need to show to the U.S. Embassy in a bank account in order to prove to them that you can afford to live and study in the United States. So you never have to pay all that money up front. The only lump sum of money you'll ever have to pay when you study in the States is you pay for a one semester of tuition in the beginning of that semester. So again, that's half of this, a little over $4,000 um, you will pay in the beginning of that semester. So essentially at a community college, you save a lot of money. Students get the same exact education those first two years as they would at a four-year institution. Um, so, for example, if we look at the University of Florida, which is in Gainesville, Florida, HCC first for those first two years would save close to $35,000 on tuition alone. So just on that top line, that's a lot of money and you're getting the same education. Um, I'll briefly tell you about our programming. We are open, we are face-to-face. -face. Students are taking classes um, on campus as well as online. We have a real student-focused education system. So at HCC, we have over 160 different programs um, and we break it down to these different types of programming. So the first line you see there is the Associate of Arts degree. Um, these programs are the ones that you want to uh, major in if your goal is to transfer into university. So students will select an Associate of Arts degree program if their ultimate goal is to get a bachelor's degree in the U.S. Um, the Associate of Science degree programs are more specialized degrees. So these are just two-year programs. Some of them will transfer, but these are essentially um, some of the majors like nursing, entrepreneurship, um, computer programming, things like that. Lastly, we do offer college credit certificates. They are one to two semester long programs. So students can walk away with a certificate without the time commitment of a two or four year degree. Um, currently, we offer four programs in the college credit certificate category. We have entrepreneurship and innovation, business management, event planning, or food and beverage management. So those are essentially the, the breakdown of the categories of programs that we offer. So we share articulation agreements with all of Florida's 12 public universities. Um, which basically means that you will automatically get admitted and accepted into any of those institutions. Um, even if we don't share uh, an articulation agreement with a particular university you want to transfer to, we still help with that process. Um, essentially, once you begin your studies at HCC, you're assigned your own academic advisor, and she's going to help you map out your academic plan. Um, not only, you know, for that first semester, but for the full two years of your program. And she'll begin a dialogue with you with where you might want to transfer. So that way we can make sure you're in the right classes that are going to transfer flawlessly into the bachelor's degree program that you want to essentially um, transfer to. Um, what I find to be the most important thing on this slide is that 85% of HCC students who transfer to a four-year institution, they end up going into an institution ranked in the top 50. 
So let me briefly speak about our Honors Institute. It's basically an honors program within the college. Um, some of our international students, they'll take advantage of our honors program, and it's basically for academically motivated students. So if you get good grades, you might want to think about getting into our honors institute. Our honors institute students, um, they get a, a ton of different advantages. Uh, some of them will get scholarship opportunities during their time at HCC, so you can get that tuition paid for. Uh, they can register for classes before everyone else. Those classroom sizes are capped off even smaller. So in a normal world, it's like 15, I believe, 15 students per class. But to me, most importantly is the bottom line there that 85 to 90% of our honors students who are international students as well, they will graduate and transfer to universities on full or partial scholarships. So you save a lot of money, come to HCC, get scholarships during your time with us. When you go to transfer, if you transfer with honors, um, you can transfer to an elite institution on a full or partial scholarship. And those students will transfer to some of the schools that you see listed here. So you've got, actually we have a representative from Columbia University come to our school specifically two times a year, specifically to talk to our honors students about transfer and scholarship opportunities. Now, how do you get into the honors program? Uh, there are a number of different ways that you can get into honors. After you, you first have to, of course, secure your admissions to HCC, um, but then you can get in any one of these ways. But the most common way that our international students get into honors is if they receive a 3.6 grade point average or higher after just that first semester at HCC, which is A's and B's, um, then they can apply after the first semester at HCC. Or if you take the SAT exam, even though you don't have to, say you took an SAT or an ACT and you score high enough, you can go off of those scores. If you get great grades in high school right now, you can go off of those grades. So you have a bunch of options. So this is a confusing triangle, but it's pretty interesting. Um, as I said earlier, OPT is a paid internship that you are permitted to do on your F1 student visa, but you can only do that, take that year off and work and get paid for it uh, when you complete a degree program. So if you attend a community college first and you complete your associate's degree after those first two years, then you can take one year off of studies and work and get paid for it as long as that job is related to your program area of study. Um, and actually, you know, if your plan is to earn your bachelor's degree, you can actually do OPT two times if you attend a community college, once after you receive your associate's degree, and then you can opt to do it again after you complete your bachelor's degree too. You know, if you go straight into university, you have to wait the full four years to finish your degree before doing a year of OPT. So this is a great benefit. We have a lot of students who take advantage of this because then when they go to apply to university after they're done at a community college and they have that one year of OPT under their belt, uh, that looks really good. They've completed their associate's degree. They have a year of work experience. Um, it just makes them a really attractive candidate when they go to transfer. This is the fun part. This is our student housing. I tell my students that when I lived at my college, it did not look like this. This is not normal. It's very nice. Um, it's on our Dale Mabry campus. It's called Hawks Landing. Uh, there's a pool, a beach volleyball court. Um, there's you know a grill. Um, there's a fitness center that's open 24 hours. There's a computer lab. Um, and there are three different floor plans, one, two, and four bedroom. Each student gets their own private bedroom and private bathroom, and they just share the kitchen and living room area, um, which is phenomenal. I always recommend to my students to get into a four bedroom because number one, it's cheaper. It's $655 a month per person. And then also it kind of forces them to meet more people that way when they have more roommates, so great opportunity right on campus. 
So I'll quickly go over how to apply. It's really, really simple. We have open admissions, rolling admissions. So you can um, apply real easily. You just have to fill out the online international student application. Um, and then any applicants that are sent from Education USA offices. So if you hear my presentation today and you want to apply, you do not have to pay the $50 application fee. So that's completely waived for you. Um, you do have to finish high school. So just you know, send in your high school transcript or graduation certificate. You have to prove your English language proficiency for students from the Netherlands, um, if you are doing VWO and you get a grade of a six or higher in your English, that's fine. You don't have to take a TOEFL. That would be your English language proficiency. Um, for HAVO, you have to get a grade of a seven or higher. And then if you're doing MBO, you have to get a grade of a seven or higher in English. Um, so if you didn't score those grades, uh, then you would have to take the English language proficiency exam, such as a TOEFL, an IELTS, or you could take a Duolingo English test and receive a 90 or higher on that. Um, and then you have to send in your copy of your passport's bio page and proof of financial support, which I spoke about earlier. And that is it. Super easy to apply. So now if my Wi-Fi will allow me, I would love to take your questions, if anybody has any questions. Okay, here's something in the chat. Um, is it possible to finish the last two years of the bachelor's degree in the Netherlands? Um, yes, that is possible, but it would be up to the receiving institution. So I would probably, if that was your plan, clear it with that institution first, maybe contact them, um, and you can just let the office know that uh, your plan is to hopefully do the first two years of your bachelor's degree in the U.S., but it would be up to the receiving institution uh, which courses they accept in or don't accept. So it would be a good idea to probably clear that um, prior to making any plans to study in the US first, but I'm sure that your Education USA office would uh, have more information on that. Um, we do have some other questions here uh, with regards to OPT. Would that year be added to the two year of community college with, um, so it essentially it would be two years at a community college and then one year of OPT. And then you can do two more years of, you, you got it right when you typed it in that last uh, sentence, yes. So two years at a community college, you can do one year of OPT, you don't have to, but a lot of students will opt to do that because it's, uh, you know, you, you can make money working in the US and if it's related to your program, it makes a lot of sense. And then you do two more years at a university and then you can opt to do another year of OPT then. So that's what that is all about. Um, next question, what on-campus activities do you offer for international students? That's a great question. We have a very robust um, uh, student activity center. It's our student government is what most of our clubs and organizations are all under our student government association that's on every campus. Um, we have anything from chess to intramural soccer to a global council, which, you know, all of our clubs and activities and organizations are open to international students. And I was actually just talking about this before the presentation began, um, how a lot of our students coming from the Netherlands are usually very, very, very active outside of the classroom. Um, I don't know if you remember in the beginning of the video that I showed in the, at the start of this presentation, uh, the girl on there speaking in your beautiful language. She actually worked in our office and was very active on campus as well. I just love you guys when you come to campus because you have that thirst for volunteering and participating and and also getting the grades as well so um, great question even if we don't have a campus activity that you're interested in we really encourage students um, and give them the options to create clubs and organizations 
The only thing you need is, I think it's one or two signatures of a staff or faculty member to kind of sponsor your club and then you can create your own club. Um, next question, when does the college start? So we have a fall intake um, and that begins in August, runs from August to December. We have a spring intake, which just started a couple weeks ago. It's from January until uh, around May. And then we also have summer. Um, I always recommend starting in the fall or spring, and I definitely would start in the fall, especially when we're face-to-face, because -face, it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of activities during new student orientation week um, and stuff like that. So I'm actually going to... Uh, um, type in the chat box my email address real quick if you guys do have any more questions that I'm not answering please send me an email I can always give you program specific information as well um let's move on uh mm -hmm. I wanted to do an associate's degree but is that a real degree because you call it transfer track we call it transfer track because those are the programs that you want to major in if your goal is to transfer, but it is an actual degree. So when you complete your first two years of study with us, whether you get the Associate in Arts or an Associate of Science, that is a degree. So if you get an Associates of Arts degree, which is, is one of the transferring programs, and you don't want to go to a university in the U.S. to complete year three and four, you still have your associate's degree. Um, and your Education USA office can actually give you a lot more information on that. Um, moving on to the question and answer. Um, do you offer athletic scholarships? Great question, we do. Um, and the next question is, do you have a baseball team? So I'll tell you, I'll go ahead and answer both of those in one. Um, uh, in one moment here. Um, essentially, we do offer athletic scholarships, but they're very, 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 very competitive. Um, I, for example, had a Venezuelan student who played baseball, and he was very, very great in Venezuela, was on the national team, ended coming to HCC, um, and he was on the bench for the most of the season, because even though you're fantastic, you're probably great in your country. Um, it's a little bit different when you come to the US because you're dealing with a bunch of other um, people playing uh, who have, are coming from other countries as well. You can get scholarships, they're few and far between. So if you are interested in a particular sport, for men, we have baseball and basketball. For women, we have softball, um, volleyball, tennis, and basketball. So those are the sports that we have. If you want more sports information, please do um, send me an email and get my email address from the chat box there. These are great questions. Any more questions? Okay, if that's it, um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it was really great getting to uh, present to you guys. I do have tons more information, program specific information, information on uh, college activities, um, application deadlines, and I can even help you guys through the ad admissions process if you did want to begin applying. Um, but thank you so much for your time. Um, and I will, I guess, stop sharing my screen here. Okay. Thank you.